I'm here at the community orchard and it's um, time to do some apple pruning. just here to show you the orchard and um, you may remember I said um, the idea that, well I was supposed to be pruning these apples and learning about apple pruning um, as part of the arts and nature stuff that I do at the library um, the guy unfortunately is poorly so it's been cancelled and um, but it's a shame that these these apples won't get pruned I don't think I'll be um, testing any newfound skills on these um, although, uh, back in um, the summer, I guess, early, late summer, um, there were a couple of new trees that came in here um, on Apple Day, which we have in October. Um, they blossomed and then produced small fruits. And I had read that in the first year, you remove the fruits so that the, um, the plant's energy can go into the roots. And um, I'd done that with my tree at home and um, I came here and saw the little little apples on these and thought, well, they need doing too. And so I did it. Um, they're not my trees, they're the community's trees, but I just went ahead and did it. So, um, oh, it's <laughs> a little friend for Dory. Oh, can you see that? Where are they? There we go. <laughs> oh. Sorry, dog. Oh. She doesn't want to be friends. Slightly randy dog. I don't think Dory was too keen. Um, right, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, come and vandalise some trees um, in the spirit of doing the best for them. Um, so I'll be interested to see this year if they produce um, a good, good lot of fruit, um, and then I will take full credit for it. Um, Anyway, so yes, I can't do anything here, but I can do my trees at home. Um, so that's what we're going to do this week. While we're here, though, I will just show you. So these are all apple trees. This one's a pear. Um, but back here uh, is a quince. And um, that's, that's very productive. I did do quince jelly one year. Uh, it wasn't overly keen. Um, so I haven't really bothered with the quinces since. But the tree just in front of it here... No, definitely that one. This one is a medlar. And um, I didn't know what a medlar really was until last year. And um, nobody else seemed interested in them. They they just stayed on the tree. In fact, they, they pretty much bletted on the tree, which is what you need medlars to do, which is, you know, rot, rot on the tree. Um, so um, I can't remember what time of year it would have been then. Would perhaps it well into October. I think it was after Apple Day. And uh, I gave the tree a bit of a shake and they all fell off. And so I picked them up, I bletted them for a little bit longer on the windowsill. Um, and then I made uh, like a vegan honey out of them, which I've done with um, dandelion heads before, but this was great, yeah. I, I mean, I hadn't planned to make honey. I'd planned to make uh, medlar jelly, um, but it didn't set. So <laughs> it became honey or syrup, um, but it's lovely. And I have about, yeah, 12 jars of it. Um, so I'm getting through that this year. There's the community orchard. So hopefully, although these don't get a prune this winter, they'll still be happy trees. And the guy said um, we'll try and prune, do a summer prune, a sort of uh, lighter summer prune on them instead. Okay. Right, I'm going to finish walking the dog um, and then think about pruning my own trees. Come on, Dory. Ish change of plan. Um, while I was um, 
doing the intro at the orchard, um, I thought I'd hang around for a bit in case anybody didn't know that the Apple Day was cancelled. And a couple of people did come down and um, I let them know um, that it wasn't taking place. Um, and then a chap comes along and starts talking and I'm like, are you? And this is the guy who was supposed to be running it. And he too was concerned that people would come and not know it was cancelled. So he just walked down to let anyone know. Um, but very fortuitous because um, that gave me an opportunity to sort of, uh, yeah, um, ask him lots of questions. Interesting sort of stuff he was saying and the history he knew about the community orchard as well. Um, but I asked about my trees and because they're very young trees and basically he said I don't have to even think about pruning until they have been in the ground for a couple of years. Um, so yeah, I don't really need to worry. Um, I did look up a few more things though about then, um, I think it's formation pruning it's called when they're very young and there are some things you can do and obviously, <laughs> obviously um, if there's anything diseased or damaged you kind of want to take that out um so i have cleaned my secateurs and i'm ready to um to sort of inspect the trees but i don't expect to have to do very much um but what i do need to do and he said i need to do that now is uh put the ones that are in pots into the ground um so i've got to decide where they go and that's why i'm down at the plot um i brought down what I've got. So the pear tree was already here. Um, I've got a cherry tree here. Uh, that one was gifted from a neighbour. Um, the pear tree was gifted from um, my cousin's husband. Um, the I've got the apple tree that I bought in the January sale. I've also got a um, mulberry tree which apparently can grow very large. So well the allotment is the best place for it then um, rather than the home garden. So I brought that down. And I have some shrubs as well. I've got some berry plants. I've got a black currant and a red currant, and a blackberry that my a thornless blackberry that my mum uh, dug up for me. So that's no idea where that's going to go. I uh, brought more cardboard, of course. Um, yeah, so I think I'm just going to have a wander around the plot and a think, and see where some of these trees might go because I have to. I have to keep in, I have to consider now where the greenhouse is going to go because before that wasn't a consideration and I was going to use this strip here but I'm not that is closest to the shed because it's at the back of the plot I mean the sun goes overhead I don't really have to worry about the sun too much um anyway so I'm going to have a wander around the plot and see what to do okay option one is this strip so actually i'm thinking that the greenhouse if the compost bins move to this corner then the greenhouse actually has quite a lot of room back here so in fact it can go uh facing forward which i didn't think it would be able to do dory that's enough anyway so that i think leaves plenty of room for the trees um so mulberry, pear, apple, noisy dog, and then two currants in between. Um, I like the symmetry of this, uh, but then what do I do with my cherry? Okay, so that's option one. Now option two um, is a little more food forest. Um, so you'll enter the plot where the cardboard is here and here and they'll have the arches um, and then as you walk down you'll have a cherry tree this side the mulberry this side so you're walking between the trees and then the apple and the pear and the noisy dog um, also satisfyingly kind of symmetrical I'm really not sure Shall I have another cup of tea and think, Dory?
<laughs> yes, you. Obviously very needy today. There you go. There's the thumbnail, Dory. <laughs> Probably a bit close. I can't make a decision. Sorry, at 12 then, because Dory has to be on my right hand side. She's like Zoolander, you can only turn one way. Um, I thought I'd walk down the plot and see where other people have put their fruit trees um, and whether that will help me determine. He's just got trees right in there. Huh. And there and along there. And now these three trees are right at the back of that plot. Look how big they are. Oh, there's four actually. Okay, four. And that one has fruit trees in the middle of each bed. Which I was considering. It seemed quite a radical thing to do. There's a corn. Corn plot. Spooky. I like you're in a Stephen King film. Okay, Dory, come on. That wasn't that helpful. So I wouldn't say there was an enormous amount of method to the madness in the planting of the fruit trees around this site, um, but there were definitely a couple that had my, um, what did I say, idea one, um, which is to put them along the back. Um, it makes the most sense in terms of light and if the greenhouse is behind them actually a bit of shade on the greenhouse is probably not a bad thing with these incredibly hot summers we're starting to have um so this is what it looks like okay so whoop, apple tree in the middle black currant red currant pear tree on the end here and cherry tree on the end here the mulberry i'm going to hold off um dory because that's an un unknown entity at the moment. Um, so I'll do a bit more research on mulberries and see that... Dory! That's enough! Mm. Um, and see that if uh, it would be better kept in a pot. Bad dog on the plot! Bad dog! Not really. Um, okay. So, it's getting a bit cold, I'm going to get these in. They've all been soaked, um, so they're ready to be planted. Now, what I know about planting fruit trees is probably less than any of you watching, um, but uh, not to go too deep. So, the roots need to go outwards rather than downwards. Um, so, you want to dig a hole um, that's just the uh, depth of the root ball. Um, okay, and uh, as wide as possible. Okay, let's get the spade. Um, I think I got that about right in terms of depth um, and I've just firmed it in with my uh, heel and uh, watered it and then covered just a cardboard mulch. Um, I didn't pay oops, much attention to actually how the tree was leaning but I think I think the prevailing wind is this way 
So, yeah, probably should have faced the other way. Oh well, the tree's gonna grow as the tree's gonna grow. Okay, let's get the other two in. I got a better square shape for this one. Um, the width of the fork is about the width of the tub. So I've done three, 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 three spades depths. That's, there's a word for that, isn't there? I've heard Alice Fowler say it. Um, anyway, that has made a nice square. So I'm gonna lift the soil out and then put the tree in. Um, see, you just, do, you just do something once and then you've learned something new and you put it into practice. She says. Where's the dog gone? How did she get over there? You escaped. You were tethered. Come back. Good girl. Stay this side. Look at you. I'm flushed from actually doing some hard work. Uh, three trees in. Yay. Um, so there we go. Pear, <laughs> apple, and cherry, um, and slightly calmer dog. There we are, all in, watered, some cardboard around the base. I found some rocks, so I just put that round to hold the cardboard. <laughs> yeah, we're going home now, Dory. I'm not going to put the currants in today. Uh, I partly want to check if. Uh, this is enough spacing really to have a current in between the two trees. Um, I don't want to compromise the roots. But yeah, that's really satisfying actually. I'm happy with that. I'm not sure my spacing was very exact. I did roughly measure um, just with my feet. Um, but oh well, that's fine. Uh, okay, Dory. Um, cool. Okay. Job done. Right, Dory. Let's go. You're rocking slightly because you are balancing in a light look bush. Um, I thought I'd finish today's video um, by actually doing some pruning. I've got my clean secateurs and this is um, my sunset apple tree in the home garden. Um, I've just had a look at the tree in the front garden, which is a James Greve, and that one was fine. It had the goblet shape that the one at the allotment does, um, so it doesn't really need anything doing to it. It only went in um, late autumn, so it's absolutely fine. Um, I just took off one sort of branch that looked like it was crisscrossing. Now that had the goblet shape. Now this one, and I will take you off the lilac bush now. So there's the tree. This is, as I say, the sunset tree. Uh, it was just one straight branch or trunk um, until fairly recently where the leader has stopped and it's split off. Let's try and get that to focus. And it's gone up and it's got the two buds now at the top. There we go. Um, so that's fine. Um, they can do their thing now. Um, the only other thing you can do with formation pruning is take off anything on the lower stem um, that won't be part of the eventual tree. So these are very low down, these two side branches. There's the bottom of the tree and this is, uh, this is a little perennial sweet pea that I'm growing up there. Not sure that was a good idea. But anyway, I'm just going to snip these off. So that's all I'm going to do with that one. Now I have another um, apple tree, uh, which is a leader, um, rather than the goblet, um, but it wasn't in the ground. And I thought, oh, I'll just dig a quick hole and put it in the ground, you know, because now I'm so good at digging holes for trees. Um, I have done it. There's the hole. Um, but this whole length of border here was underneath the weed suppressing membrane, which I didn't know until I started digging. 
uh, because it was so overgrown on top of it. This is why you just don't use this horrible stuff. It's that kind of stuff which frays at the edges and then all the bits of plastic get into your soil. The previous owners of my house love the stuff. It is everywhere and I've gradually been pulling it up as I've been been doing the garden. Anyway, I've dug a big hole. I'm going to put this tree in it. Here's the tree. Excuse <laughs> the terrible mess at the back of my garden. Um, this was all the stuff that was growing. So I got four, uh, three, oh no, four, four tubs of what was growing on top of the and soil and this was where the wood chip was. So all that was on top of the weed suppressing membrane. And then I also pulled out all of these huge roots, which are from this. And it goes along the top of the chicken wire fence. Um, so I'm hoping this tree can hold its own next to it. Um, and I'm also not that worried because um, it's a tree that was gifted to me by a neighbor, but it's one she grew from seed, a, a pink lady eating apple seed now they don't necessarily grow true to type so it's probably going to be some kind of crab apple that actually this if it produces any fruit at all um, but I thought it could just be used as a pollinating partner this is a sort of dead area at the back of the garden I've got a plum tree over here and a hazelnut tree here another hazelnut there um, so it's got a kind of orchardy vibe to it sort of um, so I thought there's this space going spare here I'll just stick the tree in um, so I'm going to do that now and then have a look how I'm going to prune this because it's slightly more complicated I think That actually went in really easily um, and I've, some of that um, kind of topsoil that was on top of the weed um, suppressing fabric that had um, been rotting down with the wood chips and things that was really good soil so I've just kind of stuck that on top um, but yeah actually that looks pretty good um, so this I'm going to do the formation pruning on as well because it's still quite a young tree um, so when you're formation pruning, as I understand it, uh, anything on the lower third of the tree you want to take out completely, like I just did uh, with the sunset variety. Anything in the mid third you want to kind of reduce by half, I think. And then anything on the top third you leave. Oh, annoyingly, my, video, uh, my phone didn't video that. <laughs> and it's not something you can redo once you've chopped something off. So these ones that were right at the bottom can see there uh, I've taken completely off so that was the first third uh, the second third of the tree I um, pruned these all by half see I'm still not pointing the camera in the right place pruned all these ones by half and then the top third of the tree I've done nothing okay um, I have checked if there's anything diseased or dead there isn't it all looks very healthy so that's fine my um, tree pruning video uh, included lots of tree planting but also some pruning in the end even if I didn't actually capture it on video <laughs> but happy with all of that and uh, I think that's it for this week oh I did want to say if you do have more established trees um, clearly my video will not have been helpful um, can I recommend you go over to the grapevine gardener because I watched his 
recent video on tree pruning and it was super informative and if I had larger more established trees um, that would have really helped me um, but I don't so I've done the formation pruning anyway and uh, yeah we'll see what they do um, see if we get some blossoms see if we get some fruits so that's it that's it for this week thank you for watching um, if that was helpful at all please do like and subscribe and I'll see you again soon